The word may sound familiar to you, but I can guarantee you that the majority of you guys watching this are not thinking of the same meaning of tick that I am when I say this word. You may relate the term to a bug that lies deep beneath your pet's fur, or the sound that a clock makes as the second hand spins around, slowly reaching minutes and then hours. And these are fine ways to associate the word tick in everyday life. In fact, if I could, I would give an arm and a leg to forget what my meaning of tick is. I would love to think about a small bug or a clock in regard to this tiny three-letter word, but instead I think of something that affects my everyday life. Although bugs and ticking clocks can be annoying with their spinning second hands and their flapping wings, I can guarantee you that my definition of a tick is a lot more annoying than that of a little creature or a wall clock. My definition of a tick is an involuntary movement or sound that can pretty much control a person's bodies and brain all at once. I may not be a doctor, but I do know a lot about these ticks as I deal with them on a daily basis. My immediate definition is kind of poor, so following the involuntary movement or sound speech, I usually begin to talk about a metaphor. It's one of the most clever ones I could think of when relating ticks to neurotypical people and how they live their daily lives. Imagine this, you are in a classroom or an office or a movie theater, basically a public place where your attention is required to get the full experience out of the endeavor. And you're in the middle of the lecture or a speech with your boss or the climax of your movie, whatever the circumstance, and you feel it. You have a really annoying itch in your throat and you would love to clear it with a cough or an <clears throat> Of course, you would need to make it subtle so you don't interrupt those around you, so you do it just once. One little cough. But that didn't satisfy the urge. In fact, your throat becomes even more irritated and your eyes begin to water. You're trying to hold in your cough so you can pay attention to the situation that is required of you, but all you can think about is your itchy, irritated throat. You cough again. Once. Twice. But people begin to look at you sideways, and your throat is like a raging fire. You aren't allowed to leave the room, and you're just standing there trying to hold in these coughs, mainly so that the other people can enjoy their movie, lecture, or meeting. And through all of this, you've realized you've missed everything important that you should have been listening to. You tighten your throat, let out a sad kind of squeak, a gasp for air, but your throat is still raging. You've missed the opportunity that you should have been paying attention to, and your throat is still on fire. The meeting is over and you can't hold it in any longer. You let out all kinds of different coughs. Big ones, little ones, all trying to make that itchiness go away. None of the coughs feel just right, like you've managed to defeat the fiery raging throat of yours. All of the coughs you've done have interrupted everyone in the meeting, movie, lecture, whatever you were doing, and you've missed everything because you spent the whole time trying not to cough. This is what it's like having a tick and having to hold them in. The cough is your tick and the itching in your throat are the urges to have the tick. Of course, this is just a metaphor and ticks aren't always made of people just coughing. My ticks are caused by Tourette's syndrome and that's a neurological disorder that causes me to make these involuntary movements and sounds. The tics I have to deal with can be anything from jerking my neck from side to side, to coughing and clearing my throat, to bending my ring finger at the knuckle, popping my back in and out until the muscles move around, pretty much anything. Whatever the tick is, that feeling of the itchy throat phenomena is there in any part of my body. My motor tics or physical tics are a lot worse than my vocal tics and they've continued to change and develop over the years. Ever since I can remember, I have had tics. I don't remember a world without feeling like my brain and body were in a constant battle with each other. Sometimes I kick my ankles together until they bleed, and sometimes I jerk my back in an ungodly manner just because my tick does not feel right, and I do it until it feels right. It kind of feels like there is billions and billions of little fire ants running up and down my body and burning me until I give in and do the tick. It's hard to relate, for example, the ticks in my back to that of a coughing metaphor because a lot of people can't really understand it. I guess it could be like a normal itch in your back, but intensified to the extreme. If you have an itch, you usually give in and scratch it to satisfy the urge. And this is the same with my back ticks and other full body ticks. Until I do the tick, that feeling of itchiness or burning, it just doesn't go away. 
I am 22 years old now and I was diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome when I was 12 years old and it's been a wild ride. There used to be times when I just couldn't sit still. I would lay on my stomach with my arms stretched at my sides and my legs tensed with my parents holding my arms and legs down so I wouldn't move. And this was for my benefit and on my request. The ticks I do, they hurt me. My back ticks leave me winded for breath, and my leg ticks make me feel like I have the worst cramp in the world. My finger ticks hurt after a day at work just bending them at the joints, and my kicking tick hurts by leaving my ankles raw. For many years, the ticks I had stopped me from enjoying my life. Until I was put on the right dose of medication, I was hopeless and I just couldn't stop moving and I was so scared. People would ask me why I couldn't stop, and I didn't know. I just couldn't. Now that I am older and have dealt with this condition for many years, I have found ways to suppress the ticks. I can hold them in until I'm alone and I can redirect them into smaller, less noticeable ticks. I've had to do this pretty much all by myself. Learning how to redirect my ticks and make them into smaller movements, that was all me. I have felt pretty misunderstood my whole life having Tourette syndrome and there is still such a negative stigma surrounding it. It really does hurt my heart and if people truly knew what a burden this was to live with, I don't think they'd be so quick to make a Tourette's joke. Coprolalia is a tick which makes you blurt out obscene words. I believe that it's only 10 to 15 percent of Tourette's patients actually have this tick and it makes me almost offended per se when people automatically assume that I have this tick. It's just a part of the negative stigma that people in the media have made Tourette's out to be. And it sucks because living with the ticks I do, I would love for people just once to realize that it isn't a joke. That it's a serious condition and saying you have Tourette's just because you're being ignorant and blurting out swear words is a joke is very offensive to people who actually struggle with this in their daily lives. Along with the ticks comes impulsivity and OCD behaviors. I've always been a very impulsive person and I hate to admit it because it's something that people use against me. None of the stuff I do impulsively is negative per se, it's more like if I get an idea I have to start on it right now. Even now for an example it is 12.36 a.m. and I just decided to film this video and I had to start it right now. It's frustrating, but there's not a lot I can do about it. A lot of the doctors I've met and dealt with have told me that Tourette's patients are always seen as different or feel different. And this is so true. Growing up is hard enough in itself, but growing up feeling like you're a monster in your own skin is even worse. I have always felt weird and I know I am weird. I've been told hundreds of times by different people that I'm too weird. And it's kind of eye-opening that the Tourette's in my brain might be the main reason that this is the way I am. It's hard to believe that just because my brain is messed up in certain areas that I am the person I am today because of it. I am weird and I am different and I hope that one day I'll be able to accept that. At this point I'm just rambling but I would love for people to watch this and understand me a little more. What makes me tick? Pun intended. It's hard living with Tourette's syndrome and I think people who know me as I am today don't realize how much it still affects me. For example in this video you probably haven't noticed me tick that much and that is again because I'm redirecting them into smaller movements. I don't know if you can see it but my feet are literally moving right now. Tourette's will always affect me and as much as I don't like to say it, I hate it. But I have to accept it. I have to. Because it's a part of me. Sure, I may jerk my arms like a crazy person sometimes and you can often catch me kicking my feet together when I'm walking but these are just two little things who make up who I am today. I wish I could know everything there is to know about Tourette's, so maybe I could understand myself a little more, but maybe it's best to discover who I am as Carly and not just some label or diagnosis. If anything, I would love to bring awareness to Tourette's because I don't want it to be a joke anymore. I want people to accept it as they do with other disabilities. I really hope that next time you hear a Tourette's joke that maybe you'll be a little bit braver to stand up and say hey that's not cool and provide some education for the person who was being inconsiderate. Awareness is key and I hope that one day even I will be able to accept myself for who I am living with this crazy disorder. I'm going to learn to love the things that make me tick. Thank you.